Hey plant friends, welcome to my planty work from home office setup. Move and grow, YouTube show. So since March, we have all pivoted. We've all been working from home in our makeshift offices and uh, making it work. And I was very inspired at the end of 2020 in December, I put up a Instagram post on my account saying, hey, this is what my planty work from home space looks like. What does yours look like? How are you guys using plants to incorporate uh, some joy into this stressful new work day and office? And I was blown away by all of the responses that I got and the photos that you sent. So I'm so excited to give you a tour of my planty work from home setup. Now we've launched the hashtag planty WFH, planty work from home hashtag. So you guys can all share your planty work from home setups. We can search the hashtag and search it and get inspired to see all of our different offices. So I'm gonna show you mine and then I've actually picked the top five planty work from home setups that were sent to me with the hashtag and I'm actually going to go through them with you guys and review the setup and some inspirational takeaways from each setup that we can then use in ours. So why don't you come a little bit closer and I'll break everything down for you. Also, before we get started, I wanted to show you my planty blazer for my work from home Luke still wearing slippers, <laughs> but I love this planty blazer. I put it on whenever I have important Zoom calls or meetings with sponsors or anything because it makes me feel official, but yet planty and I love it. So anyway, before we dive into the office area, I wanted to show you what I'm sitting right here. This is the office and I love that this is to the right of me. So we recently did a episode on the podcast, Bloom and Girl Radio, called Planty Work From Home, Plants and the Office, The Why and the How. So um, we go through these 14 elements of biolithic design. Biolithic design is um, incorporating plants and nature into buildings and office setups. One of the aspects of biolithic design is like this feeling of being away, this feeling of kind of being transported to nature and surrounded by nature. And I love that my office setup has two walls. So I've got this awesome green wall. You might remember it from my old apartment because we did move. So my old apartment, you can see in this picture, these are Wally Grow Eco Planters and they were in a different arrangement and you can click back to see how I installed them if you're interested, but I made them tighter to get that kind of horizontal green wall effect and I've let them kind of dwindle down. My mom got me this beautiful um, kind of iron wall decoration and it's a girl playing amidst the sunflowers and plants. So sometimes I'll actually take the green wall and kind of like thread it throughout the plants like that which I think is like a cool jungle vibe, but also it's just so nice to have this cascading vine like literally next to my head. Um, sometimes if I'm in the middle of a work day and my eyes are getting tired from looking at the screen or writing too much, I will literally, all I have to do is turn my head and I can just zone out to the beautiful patterns of this philodendron in Brazil. I freaking love it. I'm obsessed with philodendron Brazil in general, um, but it's so nice to have a beautiful aspect of nature literally hanging next to my head for whenever I need a break. It's great. And because you have the second wall, it is this nice like enclosed feeling where I have kind of nature coming at me from, you know, several angles and not just my desk. Let's head over to my desk. Welcome to the hub of Bloom and Grow Radio. Um, this is where the magic happens <laughs> for the podcast, the YouTube, the TikTok, whatever else I'm doing. Um, this is where it all goes down. So as you can see, I've got my podcasting headphones. Man, I have never used an external monitor before uh, COVID. This thing is amazing. I'm so obsessed. I've got my normal work from home setup the monitor, the computer, the headphones, the external, um, you know, separate mouse, little fancy rose gold keyboard, you know, it's all good. Um, and that stuff's all important, but really the aspects of this work from home office that help my sanity and joy every day are the things that are surrounding it. So I just wanted to point out a few things that I have been using throughout my workday to bring some more joy into my workday and reduce a bunch of my stress. And I know I just mentioned that podcast episode, but I can't recommend it enough for you to click the link in the show notes after you watch this video and go listen to that whole episode because 
man, we break down so many things and there are so many great ideas because obviously everybody's work from home setups are going to look different. We all have different, we're all working with what we got in our own ways. This is my bedroom. My bed is right there. So all of my Zoom calls, my freaking bed is in my background if I don't have one of those filters on. Um, some people are making it work in their living rooms. When I was in my old apartment in New York City, I had a freaking desk that literally collapsed in and out of the wall. So every night I had to take all my papers off and put it back on. So I get that we're all in different setups with different abilities, um, also different budgets. Um, but I hope you can just take one thing away from this video and from that podcast to just green up your life a little bit and bring a little more joy into your everyday. My biggest rule of thumb with my work from home, with my hashtag plenty work from home setup is I need green every aspect of my eye line. So when I sit at my desk, I need to be able to see green anywhere I go. Any place that my eye draws, I wanna see some form of a plant or some representation of a plant. So I showed you my green wall, which has been great because I feel kind of enclosed with that green wall. But I've also seen to it that every corner of my desk has some version of a plant. So I've got my air plant collection here. These are so easy to keep at your desk. They don't even need soil. I barely water them. I probably should water them a little bit more than I do. Um, I have them next to my essential oil, oil diffuser. Um, I have a snake plant that's super hardy. And then, as you can see, we have Figaro, our fiddly fig tree. So this is the darkest corner of my bedroom. <laughs> classic. So I, as you can see, put a Soltech Solutions aspect light to make sure that I could illuminate this corner and bring the plants that I need to have with me on the day to day and have them thrive in this area. So I put my highest light plant right under the Soltech light and then in the kind of cone of light that disperses out of the light, I've tried to kind of have those lower light tolerant plants much lower. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine air plants right now, that snake plant. And then I just bought this at Whole Foods earlier this week. It was a Thanksgiving cactus that was in bud about to bloom. And I have had the privilege of watching this thing open its blooms. And I'm so excited to watch all the other blooms. Um, but especially a tip for in the winter, if you're getting bummed and also at your desk, if you're getting bummed, Try and get a plant that blooms quickly, um, like get something that's about to bud and watch the blossom open in the winter. Try paper whites or amaryllis. Get something that blooms that kind of just, you know, brings that little spark joy moment into your life. I highly suggest it. Because I feel like picking plants for your office setup can go two ways. I went the route of low maintenance plants because I feel like actually I want to use their visual but I don't want to feel like I have to um, deal with my plants a lot. I like to take breaks from my work day throughout the day. I love this sense of Yera Zelanica and the pattern of its leaves so I will let my eyes drift onto that plant and just like look at the pattern for a minute. I will look at my philodendron Brazil but I don't want to be like mis misting and watering stuff especially near my computer. I can also see someone who might put high moisture loving plants near their office so it takes them out of their computer so that they can spritz their plant every day or that they can be watering it intentionally. Um, so I think that's a plant parent personality thing and if you want to find out your plant parent personality you can take the link, uh, you can take the quiz, it's for free um, and it'll be linked in the show notes. But anyway, that's a thing on picking the plants. I think the key is just picking the plants that work for your environment. Um, and also like pick the plants that make you smile. Figaro was um, a fiddly fig tip cutting that Billy gave me and he's grown like, I mean freaking four times its size. His leaves have like grown like four times as large since we've gotten him and put, put him under that grow light. So looking at Figaro reminds me of Billy. It makes me happy. This cactus with a bloom on it makes me happy. So sometimes I also will like kind of rotate plants in and out. So everybody gets a fair visit with me and I get a fair visit with them. Another way to incorporate plants if you have a no light or a low light office, pictures of plants. So studies are proven that we will, uh, we can reduce stress, increase positivity, increase concentration by looking at plants. But apparently we get that result from looking at a plant or looking at a photo of a plant. So I have the Bloom and Grow Keep Blooming exclusive Molly Mansfield print. It's free for you if you want it. If you need a planty photo to put in your desk, um, 
It's free when you join the newsletter. It's a free download. This artist, Molly Mansfield, made it for me. It's um, prickly pear cactus in different stages of bloom with the keep blooming motto on it. Um, so that's a really nice way you can get like big framed photos of flowers or art prints. I mean, there are so many amazing botanical illustrators, but if you can't have live plants, that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the benefits of having plants. You can get posters, photos, paintings, watercolors, any form of botanical art, I think will probably up your jungle game in your office. You know what I'm saying? Another thing that is a way to kind of bring the nature to you without having to bring like nature to you if you can't do that is through essential oils. So I recently read this book called Forest Bathing and in it this doctor suggests that um, just by smelling essential oils of certain trees that can actually have an amazing effect on your body. So I have been playing around with my oil diffuser all of these different type of essential oils. So I love the hinoki tree. There's a Japanese tree called hinoki. I love diffusing hinoki oil. Um, it's rather pricey but I love it because it makes you feel like you're in a forest. I also do cypress, eucalyptus, lavender, lemon. I've got a whole um, I've got like a whole bowl over here and every day I see like what kind of mood I'm in and I like mix my own little oil mo um, oil mixture and then it just kind of puffs out of here and it's just like a nice, it's also kind of a nice little sound and I mean it's a tiny amount of humidity but hey, any humidity in my dry home I will take. I also love to burn candles throughout the day with different scents. This one is the Mod Sprout um, Glow and Grow candle with <laughs> which I'm obsessed with. You've probably seen it on my Instagram. It's a candle that you burn through and then can use as a reservoir for plants, which I love. This one currently, that one that I already burned through was the wildflower scent, which I loved. This one is um, the basil scent and it really smells like basil. I'm pretty obsessed with it. And then this little area of my um, desk is also where I have other really special things that are just nice to look at. I have a pin of my grandmother's um, several crystals, some trinkets that remind me of my grandpa. Um, I'm just mildly into crystals. Let me know if you guys are into crystals, but there are some different crystals I like to hold when I do different calls or when I do different things, which I'm really enjoying. Um, some sea glass from our favorite beach and just like little trinkets that bring me joy, a picture of my family. Um, so that's been really nice. So also that's a nice way of just kind of elevating your workspace whether or not it's with plants, but just like bringing some nice stuff that will bring a smile to your face when you look at it, whether it's plants or whether it's crystals or whether it's, you know, um, my Palo Santo. Sometimes I just have to cleanse when I'm on like my 10th hour of working on a podcast or <laughs> going into a meeting or working on a contract, right? I also have my favorite planter that I own in my collection. Um, it's this really cool terracotta face planter that we got in Mexico on the trip that we got engaged. Um, the, these planters were all over the hotel and they weren't for sale, but I spoke to the manager and I asked if I could just buy one from them because I was so obsessed with them and it's been really fun and I like having my little lady sitting with me throughout my work day. So this is the anatomy of my office, but I think what's even more interesting is to break down the anatomy of some of your offices. So. Like I said before, on Instagram in December, I kind of made the hashtag planty WFH, planty work from home hashtag, and encouraged our community members to use it and share their planty work from home spaces in an effort to inspire each other and just share like what we've been doing and how we've made lemonade out of lemons with this crazy work from home situation. So I thought it would be fun for me to go through some of these planty work from home setups and give them a little critique. So let me pull, I'll put my blue light blockers on because you gotta be aware of that blue light. So I believe I said I'm doing five. So the first one that I love is this work from home office by Villa Esoterica. They are so cool and they were a big part of the inspiration for this episode. A few things that I love about this home 
I love that the chair faces the window. So actually that's kind of a common theme with several of the offices that I'm gonna go over with you. If you have a window that you can put your desk right up against and you have the opportunity to look at nature and not like a stressful street or something, definitely take it because it's nice to be able to see green, look at nature, maybe see a bird flying by. My parents have their um, desks up against windows. They put bird feeders outside and all spring and summer it was like, when does the blue jay come? When does the cardinal come? It was like the biggest moment of our house. Um, I live for this velvet chair. I mean, I have two baby blue velvet chairs that will be prominent in our next home, which I'm really excited about. But man, what a luxurious feeling. A positive aspect of creating our work from home spaces is we can kind of be in control of what we want our office to look like. So why not make our office an epic jungle vibe? And why not have a luxurious velvet chair that you sit in and work all day? I mean, that's fabulous. And then I also love that this whole picture, there is a there are 365 degrees of plants. I mean, plants to the left, to the right, behind. That must be a great zoom background. Um, they've got all these plants in the background and then a beautiful view beyond their monitors. So Villa Esoterica, major planty work from home goals. The next picture I wanted to show is Daryl from House Plant Journal. He is a beloved friend of the Bloom and Grow Radio podcast. Um, I love that Daryl, once again, his monitor looks out from a window. He has this amazing um, plant room in his house that is like all windows. He's got epic plants in his workspace. And I think that's really cool. I think if you have the ability to put some larger plants in your workspace, it really does immediately trigger that like urban jungle vibe um, than a bunch of smaller plants. His big monstera, I mean, the way that it's creeping over his piano is so freaking cool. Um, he also has plants all surrounding him to every left, right, front, behind. Um, I bet his Zoom call background looks pretty cool as well. Um, and I also love that he has his piano there. I mean, Daryl is not a professional piano player, but I love that he keeps his piano there so he can like jam out. And I think that goes to say like bringing things that bring you joy into your workspace that you can just go and, you know, for me, it's plants. I wanna go take a five minute break and look at a plant and bring a smile to my face. Maybe it's taking a five minute break with your cat or dog. Maybe it's taking a five minute break and playing a little song on the piano. I mean, that's super cool. So I love Daryl and I love, his planty work from home setup. I also love that um, staghorn fern in the upper right hand corner of the photo. That's so epic. Next is Planted Personalities Home Office. This is so boho, so jungle. I absolutely love the bookshelf that she has that is so bohemian um, and obviously filled with plants. She clearly has awesome style. Um, it's a totally different vibe than the other two that we saw. You see all of the different, I like the kind of gallery wall aspect that she did. She's mixed plants with these like inspirational quotes, which I love because I myself have my keep blooming quote in my office. Um, a common thread among all of the photos we're gonna look at today, if you see everybody uses their vertical space. So she has a bunch of hanging plants hanging from what looks like a curtain rod. Um, she also has, you know, she uses her walls for her quotes. She uses the shelving and then she has this really cool kind of macrame thing hanging in the upper right. So I think with office space, because desk space can be so limited with your computer and your um, books and your, you know, keyboard and all of it, trying to go vertical is a really great way to utilize your space when you have a small work from home space. And I love that Planted Personalities really took that to heart. Um, next one is Amory. And these are all their Instagram handles. That's how I'm referring to them. Amory took it to the next level and she actually set up her planty work from home office outside. I'm obsessed with this. You get the beautiful fresh air um, and she's also once again surrounded herself with plants. Interestingly enough with the window looking into the inside of her apartment, but so cool that she has plants behind her. Once again, that's probably a very cool zoom setup. Um, and then plants all to her left and in front of her in her eye line. And it must also be lovely to be able to breathe fresh air and not your dry apartment air all day. So if it is weather permitting, having some sort of outdoor setup is really nice. 
and once we moved um, in, I'd say September, I spent my, all my work days outdoors on our back porch because um, it was just so nice in the fall weather. Another one I wanted to show who I feel like just did the most amazing job with a very small workspace is Shrey Vida 1810. As you can see, her desk is tiny. Her desk basically fits her computer on it and she has that little chair, but man, she's made such a a urban jungle vibe by utilizing her vertical space with hanging plants, shelving, and really cute lights. Um, and she's made this tiny little corner of her home so inviting. I don't know if those are grow lights right at the top, but I could easily see popping an aspect, you know, a Soltec aspect light or some sort of grow light up top to even in, um, increase her light availability for that. But imagine just sitting there at that cute little cozy tiny workspace and just looking at that beautiful shelving full of plants all day long. I freaking love it. Great job, Shrey. We're gonna do one bonus. I know I already did five, but I just wanted to give a shout out to the Foggy Plant. He's an at-home clarinetist. And as you can see, I just love this shot of the bookshelf. I think a really fun way to mix up your office space is anything that is supposed to be just business like put a plant there. So a bookshelf is supposed to be, you know, for your books or your papers or whatever, but stick plants when you can. Actually, several of these um, featured accounts have bookshelves with a mixture of books and a mixture of plants. We know that I am a huge fan of turning a bookshelf into a grow shelf with a grow bar, and you can click the YouTube video that I have if you want to dive into that. Um, but I love that they made their bookshelf part plant, part book, and I just think it's a really fun way to kind of green up something that is can be particularly boring. So those are six of the 15 plus people that sent in photos. More people have shared, um, but this is just when I was able to collect the photos. So search Planty WFH, which stands for Planty Work From Home, on the interwebs and see our community. There were many other people that posted. These are just the five that I chose. Um, and you can also click the link in the show notes to the podcast episode. I have all of the photos that I could have potentially found of people who posted hashtag planty WFH um, and I've compiled them in the blog and also please go listen to that episode because it breaks down some of the science and some of the kind of reasoning behind a few of the things that I talked about with you today. Um, and like I said earlier, I hope that everybody walks away from this video with just one little nugget of inspiration or idea of something they can do to bring a little bit more green and a little bit more joy to your work from home or work from office as the world opens back up, um, but throughout your days. So until next time, my sweet plant friends, keep blooming and keep growing. <laughs>